Good day everyone! Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video lesson in economics. Opo, video lesson naman po tayo ngayon. At ang ituturo ko ay tungkol ulit sa economics. So, without further ado, let's switch over to my laptop and let's get started. laptop and as you can see in my screen our topic for today is all about demand function but before we know what is this demand function balikan muna natin yung ilan nating pinag-aralan nung nakaraan so sa microeconomics merong dalawang importanteng unit tayong pinag-aaralan o pinagtutuunan ng pansin si producer at si consumer Si producer, sila ang in-charge sa pagsusupply ng mga produkto o ng mga serbisyo. At si consumer naman po, sila ang nagde-demand ng mga produkto o serbisyo. Ngunit ano nga ba itong demand? Demand is the quantity of a product or service that a consumer is willing to buy given alternative prices at a specific period in time. Now, there is a strong relationship between the price of a product or of a service and how a consumer determine his or her demand. Now, this relationship of price and quantity demanded can be described by studying related terms such as demand function, demand schedule, demand curve, law of demand, and the market demand. So, for this lesson, magpo-focus tayo kay demand function. So, demand function is a mathematical representation or equation that has two variables, the dependent and the independent variables, wherein the quantity demanded ang siya pong dependent variable for it moves whenever the price changes. And price, or yung letter P, ay ang ating independent variables. Si demand function po ay maaari nating isulat gamit ang equation na nasa ibaba. QD is equal to 250 minus 5P. So, yung 250 po dyan ay nagbabago rin yan. Dahil ang 250 dyan ay let's assume na yan ang quantity ng produkto na unwilling bilhin ni consumer. Gamitin natin ang demand function equation na iyan sa pag-solve ng ating quantity demand at ng presyo para makita na rin natin kung ano nga bang relationship ni quantity demanded at ni price. Ayan. So, here in my example, naglagay ako ng demand schedule. Ang demand schedule po ay ang tabular representation that shows the quantity demand of a consumer and the alternative prices. So, pero sa ating pong demand schedule, kung papansin ninyo, ay hindi kumpleto ang mga information. So, meaning to say, tayo ang magko-compute ng mga missing information dyan. So, simulan na natin. Let's copy the formula and let us solve for the point A. Sa point A, ang given natin ay si price na 50 pesos. Now, let us supply this 50 here. So, magkakaroon tayo ng QD is equal to 
250 minus 5 multiply by 50. Now, kapag ganito na ang ating given, kinakailangan natin sundin ang order of operation wherein mauuna nating isolve yung naka-parenthesis. So, QD is equal to 250 minus 5 times 50. So, unahin nating isolve si 5 times 50. So, what will be the answer? The answer is, very good, 250. So, QD is equal to 250 minus 250. For the final answer, magpatuloy tayo sa pagsusol. 250 minus 250, the answer is 0. So, meaning, ang answer sa point A, there is a 0 quantity demanded for the price of 50. So, walang bibilhin si consumer kung ang halaga ng produkto ay 50 pesos. So, tingnan naman natin si point B. So, let's copy the given. Still, ang, ang given sa ating point B ay si price. So, supply lang natin si price dito. Kalalabasan ay... QD is equal to 250 minus 5 times 45. Okay? So, again, sa pagko-compute, unahin ang order of operation. So, unahin si parenthesis. So, 5 times 45, the answer is 225. So, QD is equal to 250 minus 225. So now, let's get the final answer. The answer is QD is equal to 25 because 250 minus 225 or 250 minus 225, the answer is 25. So, for the, to complete, to complete ang ating demand schedule, ilagay na natin ang answer na 25. So, unti-unti, unti-unti nyo nang nakikita ang relationship ni price kay quantity demanded. So, let's continue sa ating point C. Sa point C, ang given natin ay si quantity demanded naman at nawawala si presyo. So, ang hahanapin natin dito ay magkano ang presyo magkano ang presyo sa point C. Okay? So, let's supply the given. So, QD is equal to 250 minus 5P. Supply na natin si 50. So, 50 is equal to 250 minus 5P. Now, katulad nga sa aking tinuro doon sa supply function, pagsasamahin natin yung mga the same variable. So, since dito, ang naiibang variable ay si 5P, kailangan nyo pong itranspose si 5P sa kabilang side. Okay? So, magkakaroon kayo, itatranspose nyo si 5P dito, at si 50 naman ay itatranspose nyo sa kabila para magsama yung parehas na variable. Dahil hindi natin sila pwedeng isolve agad-agad. So, pag nilipat sa kabilang side, tandaan nagbabago ang sign nito. So, paglipat, 5P is equal to 250 minus 50. Okay, nakita nyo nagbago ang ang sign ni 5P at ganun din si 50. So now, let's compute. Unahin natin i-compute ito. 250 minus 50, the answer is correct, 5P is equal to 200. So now, 
aalisin naman natin itong si 5 para maiwan si P. So, paano natin gagawin yan? So, kinakailangan mo silang i-divide sa 5. So, 5P divided by 5 is equal to 200 divided by 5. So, dahil may 5 dito at may 5 dito, we can cancel them out. At may iwan na lang si letter P. So, the answer will be, what do you think? The answer will be 4P. So, P, 200 divided by 5 is equal to 4P. So, si P, for the point C, I, 4P pesos. So, sa halagang 40 pesos, mayroong quantity demanded na 50. So, ayan, unti-unti na nating nakukompleto ang ating demand schedule. So, let's continue to point D. Sa point D, ang nawawala ay si quantity demanded uli. So, supply natin yung given. So, the given is... 35 pesos. So, QD is equal to 250 minus 5 times 35. Again, order of operation, mauunang i-compute ang nasa parenthesis. So, the answer is QD is equal to 250 minus 175. So, for the final answer, 250 minus 175 the answer is 75. So, for the point D, meron tayong 75 kilo quantity demanded for the price of 35. Okay? So, next, let's compute for the point E. For the point E, ang nawawala naman uli ay si price. So, still, let's supply the given. QD is equal to 100. 100 is equal to 250 minus 5P. Okay? So, again, ulitin natin. Magkakaroon tayo ng transposing sa other side para makompute natin yung the same variable. So, magiging 5P is equal to 250 minus 100. So, sa ganito, unahin natin i-compute muna ito bago natin alisin si variable or bago natin isolve yung my variable P. So, 5P is equal to 150. Now, the same sa ginawa natin kanina para maalis si 5, i-divide natin both side sa 5. Yan. Then, since pareha silang 5, we can cancel this out at maiiwan na lang si letter P. So, 150 divided by 5, what will be the answer? The answer is 30. So, for point E, meron tayong 30 pesos na price. At for the price na of 30 pesos, merong 100 kilograms quantity demanded. So now, isa na lang ang kinakailangan nating makita. Let's solve for the point F. For the point F, si price uli ang nawawala. QD is equal to 250 minus 5P. Let's supply the quantity demanded. 125 is equal to 250 minus 5P. Again, let's transpose yung variable sa kabila, yung 5P, at itranspose naman natin yung 125 sa kabilang side para makompute natin yung the same variable. 
So, meron tayong 5P is equal to 250 minus 125. Okay? So, 250 minus 125, 5P is equal to 125. Again, para maalis si 5, dito, let's multiply both sides to 5. Okay? Okay? So, 5P divided by 5 is equal to 125 divided by, divided by 5. So, let's cancel this out. And, mare-retain C letter P. Now, 125 divided, divided by 5. The answer is 25. So, for the point F, meron tayong 25 pesos. Yan. Now, we have completed the entire demand schedule. Now, anong napapansin nyo sa ating demand schedule? Sa ating quantity demanded at sa price. What do you think is the relationship of quantity demanded kay price? They have inverse relationship. What is that inverse relationship? When the price is increasing, the quantity demanded is decreasing. And when the price is decreasing, the quantity demanded is increasing. So, meaning, saliwaan sila. Okay? Saliwaan sila. Bakit kaya ganun? E samantalang yung sa ating supply function, ang kanilang relationship ay kapag tumaas si price, tumataas din si supply. Kapag bumaba si price, bumababa din si supply. Sumusunod si supply sa pagbaba at pagtaas ng presyo. Pero dito ay iba. Bakit? Gaya rin ang sinabi ko sa isang video, my perspective si seller. Gusto nilang ma-maximize ang kanilang profit. At advantage sa kanila kapag mataas ang presyo ng produkto dahil mas kikita sila. Pero dito, dahil ang gusto ng mga consumer ay makatipid, kapag mababa yung presyo, saka tayo bibili ng madami. Pero kapag mataas ang presyo, ay kaunti lamang ang bibilhin natin. This is also true to the law of demand. That when the price increases, the demand decreases. And when the price decreases, the demand increases. Okay? So now we're done with our discussion about the demand function. So that's it for our video lesson for today. I hope that you've learned from what I uh, teach a while ago. So kung nagustuhan niyo yung video ko, kindly give me a thumbs up and at the same time, hit that subscribe button below and the notification bell para lagi kayong notify whenever I post a new video. So, kung meron kayong question related sa ating topic for today, feel free to comment down there below. So, bye and I'll see you in my next video.